Kanye West thinks the Kardashian women should be praised for being in interracial relationships. He makes this statement while defending the girl's honor, saying they do not get enough credit for all they do. Who? This guy. What do you expect? The guy married a whore. Like, what? Oh, Lord. Like, I didn't mean it like that. I mean, married her because she was one, not he didn't know. Kanye says, quote, a lot of what the Kardashians do, I don't think they get enough credit for. And what exactly is it that they do? Kanye says, quote, they prep America to accept interracial relationships. No, I don't, I don't support or villainize Kanye because I don't understand what it is we want from him. I don't know why we look at a basketball player and say, he didn't score no hockey goals this whole season. <laughs> he don't play hockey. <laughs> <laughs> Kanye don't say nothing I can agree with. What do you say to people <laughs> that say you, turn, you turned your back on the culture or Exactly, 100%, I have turned my back. Cut it right there. That's perfect. We don't need the rest. Why bro, would any of hey, us? bro, hey, hey, bro, I ain't finished. I ain't finished my sentence. And subtle, but in even many ways more profoundly devastating is the lasting damage to the survivors' will to rebuild and remain in the area. The destruction of the spirit of the people of southern Louisiana and Mississippi may end up being the most tragic loss of all. George Bush doesn't care about black people. Please call in the past few days. But is he lying? Kanye West is a double agent. Self-explanatory. Kanye only cares about Kanye. Then there's the distraction. Finish this response. God is good. Amen. But well, why do you say all the time back? <laughs> what church you went to, girl, what? I've never seen that before, ever in my life. I mean, there's never been a time that I've yelled out, God is good and somebody didn't answer. God is good. What you will find in common about all of these celebrities is that they're all out for themselves. Candace Owens is definitely the distraction. And then we have Dr. Umar. Run those donations. Where are those donations at? Cash.me slash dollar sign FDMG school. Run them donations. Cash.me slash dollar sign fdmg school it's a movement oh, shit. we got to get money by any means necessary frederick douglas high school renovations coming right up yeah cash apps. Cash apps. <laughs> <laughs> right back. Right any more cash apps and it gets way worse if it's not the gambling or the alleged drug use which i'm gonna cover in this video you honestly can't trust a word dr umar says especially about interracial dating. Now we all know he's against it, but we can't trust him because he will say anything to pander to his audience, which is why he's labeled the capitalist. In my personal opinion, I'm not a betting man, but if I had to bet, I bet you he's hit a couple snow bunnies in his past. Somebody told me that the snow bunnies got a running bet that one of them is gonna eventually take down King Kong consciousness. They said the snow bunnies is working overtime. They said sooner or later, they're going to catch King Kong slipping. They said sooner or later, they're going to catch the snow bunny boogeyman slipping. You can't catch the snow bunny boogeyman slipping. But now that we've introduced everyone, let's start off with this generation's most popular interracial couple, Kim and Kanye. Kanye West declares his love for Kim Kardashian. Hey guys, thanks for keeping it here. Kanye West has dropped a new song online and some of the lyrics reveal that he's in love with Kim Kardashian. The song is called Theraflu and we hear Kanye rap, I'll admit I fell in love with Kim around the same time she fell in love with him. Obviously referring to Kim's ex-husband, Chris Humphreys. He follows that line up with, well that's cool baby girl, do you thing. Lucky I ain't have Jay drop him from the team. For those of you who are unfamiliar, Jay is a part owner of the New Jersey Nets, which is the team Chris Humphreys plays for. Now I looked all over the place for Kanye West's take on interracial dating, but all he kept saying was how inspiring Kim was for being white and dating a black man. According to Kanye, Kim walked so other women could run from that BBC. 
way more fun than expected. Holy shit. Ooh, I could say the same about you. Do you think that you f her better than Adam did? Well, obviously, yes. And those are Kanye's words after the divorce, not mine's, so don't cancel me. And these are also Kanye's words. But Kanye West says something, and I believe that on this point he's talking the truth. He says that the movie Get Out was about him. What? Wow. Now, sink into the floor. Wait, 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 wait. Sink. But the problem is, Kanye never got out. He would continue on to date interracially. Here's what the capitalist had to say about it. Do you think Kanye West, if he had a black woman, things would be different? Oh, absolutely. I think Kim Kardashian used him. And the fact that they're making that man pay $200,000 a month in child support when both he and the wife are billionaires are absolutely uh, ridiculous. I think they want to break him. I disagree with that statement. Race played no factor in the courts taking advantage of him. And there's a lot of things I disagree with Dr. Umar on. The gambling and drugs need to be talked about. But first, we need to go over the black woman who doesn't see color when she's dating. Candace Owens. For starters, for a person who doesn't see race, she sure talks about race a lot, especially negatively about black people. And no race is perfect, so I have a suggestion. Since her husband's white, maybe she should speak on the problems white Americans have as well. And let's see how fast she loses her job. Oh wait, that happened already. She tried that and got fired. Um, it's definitely the case that Ben Shapiro was very troubled by her views on the Israel-Palestine conflict. He is obviously one of the most pro-Israel voices in conservative media, and they've had public tension um, around what she's been saying on her show. But at least she admitted that she was being pushed to talk about the blacks. Um, it's just interesting. I don't recall anyone getting this triggered when Candace was dunking on blacks. And <laughs> Candace Owens says this, no, that was always allowed and encouraged. Our good brother, the black authority, he responded to this um, in kind. So Candace finally admits she was allowed and encouraged to attack black people, which she gleefully did, but was punished for even halfway speaking on Jewish people. This is what all the media bootlegs in bed are doing. She's the one that finally said it. Exactly. But anyways, let's hear what she has to say on interracial dating. So I know I married the right person and I want every person to never allow like race to be a barrier to you finding love. That is yeah. so foolish. That will stop you. And by the way, you know, there's this. There has been so much toxicity and particularly in black relationships because of the media portraying black men as this or black women as this. And I, we just have to stop doing that, you know? Yeah. Have you ever dated a uh, black man before? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I dated black men, which is another thing that I always find really funny because the media tries to portray me as someone who only liked white guys. Mm. Actually, if you want to be honest, I started off on a really strong Asian kick in my life. Oh my gosh. I okay. thought I was going to marry an Asian man. What's wrong? <laughs> I did. My first okay. boyfriend was Japanese. My second boyfriend was Korean. I just really loved Asian men. It was weird. Right. Yeah. Child, <laughs> like, I'm I'm just just from Connecticut, there was an Asian population. She thought that answer was better, and it wasn't. But she just admitted she never started off liking black men. Honestly, what I got from that was she slept with a black guy or two, but she really likes Asian men and white men. I'm very attracted to Japanese culture, and I think that they have such a beautiful people. So to answer your questions, no, I dated a couple of black guys, white guys. Japanese people, but I've never dated a Hispanic person. I've never been attracted to a Latino man, which is weird. I'm not saying there's not one out there that I could potentially be attracted to. I just haven't met him yet. Honestly, this is my biggest fear because you want the best for your kids. I live in one of the wealthiest parts of Queens. And obviously there aren't a lot of black people, but I don't want them to be around niggas. And you know, and I know there's a difference. Stop sending your kids to the all-white schools for access to better education. As someone whose parents did the same, we've talked about it, they regret it. Let me tell you why. It causes irreputable damage to your self-esteem and your mental health that takes so much time 
and effort to self-correct that it's not worth it. But sending them to an all-white school with people who do not look like them is not the answer, I promise you. This is how you have people getting on the internet talking about like divesting from the black community or like people who are like, it's just a preference, it's just a preference. Like, no. Also how you have people my age, 28, who cannot date people the same skin complexion as them because it makes them uncomfortable, it's not their preference, when in reality it's just this thing that's like in their head that they can't shake, but they don't have the language to explain it. And it's very, I'm sure it's embarrassing for them, but it's also very embarrassing being on the receiving end of that. All of those people, the common denominator is they did not grow up with people who looked like them and developed a fucked sense of reality that honestly they probably will never unsee. And I just don't think the access to better education is worth it. And I feel like people are so quick to judge these suburban black kids who have these types of problems and are just like, well, you can just like think differently. And I don't think you understand like when you have been fighting for your life in defense of your race since you were 10 years old, it is not like a switch that you can just like get back into and think like properly. It takes effort and it's really fucked up all in pursuit of a better education that honestly we all should have access to anyways but we have a system that gives priority to wherever taxes go or whatever i don't feel like explaining it send your kids to school with people who look like them and pay for the extra tutors put them in kumon or something or yeah maybe send them to the white school and put them in environments with people who look like them so they don't forget who they are because the aftermath is scary the aftermath is how you have people like freaking candace owens and as someone who had to spend a majority of their early 20s unlearning all that i could have been doing anything else but instead i had to unlearn racial trauma that i shouldn't have been exposed to in the first place so general PSA just just don't do it or if you're going to like have guardrails but it's it's 110% not worth it I personally believe Candace Owens became Candace Owens because she grew up in White Plains New York which is about 13% African American which isn't bad because African Americans make up 13% of the population in the US but it's definitely not Harlem in the 2000s where blacks made up 77% of Harlem and White Plains is only 30 minutes away from Harlem. But I'm not gonna lie, I'm not raising my kids in Harlem. So who am I to judge her? When the truth is, I believe she's been around nothing but mostly white and Asian men. So that's just what she's attracted to. And growing up in White Plains, it's hard for her to understand the average black experience in America because she hasn't experienced it. Which is why I just like the fact that she's always talking about black issues. Now, I want to go back to something you said earlier because I know a lot of people will hear you say, well, Candace, you're speaking a lot about, you know, the black family, but then you married a white man. Yeah. I'm Dr. Always... Umar would have a huge problem with that. Yeah. Are you familiar with Dr. Umar? I have heard of him. I have not listened to him, I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. What is his argument, actually? If you could just repurpose his argument. Uh, he for me. feels everything that everything you know, black. No. <laughs> yeah. Yes, much. it is. Yeah, no. No, everything. No, he, feel, he feels black men should be with black women because when you're talking about it from an economic standpoint, you want to grow the wealth as a black family. But that and, doesn't. And, and if you marry somebody from another race, then you know your wealth will be with that person, and he doesn't like that. Okay, I would love to talk to him more about that because I mean, it's it's always very interesting to me to hear this paradox of black people who will make an argument that, you know, the system is racist and then also make an argument like this, which is essentially making an argument for the Supreme Court to revisit Virginia versus love and basically say that black Americans and white Americans shouldn't be marrying. I think the greatest thing ever is when people come together on the basis of who they love and get married. Does she know that both statements can be true? America can be racist. True. And I don't believe anyone, including Dr. Umar, has said to make interracial dating illegal. What he has said is interracial relationships do not benefit the black community, especially when black men do it. You take all your money and resources and share it with another race. And when you die, because oftentimes men die before women, that money goes right back to her race. Like Kobe Bryant. Rest in peace to him. And I know what y'all are saying. He had kids. What about the kids? Interracial couples have kids. We know. But I don't know what the government is putting in the water, but almost every interracial couple I see with kids, that kid looks more white than black. And when I was growing up, I was taught that the black gene was the most dominant gene. 
But what I'm finding out is the people who have an interracial kid, that kid comes out white with some black features. But if that kid, which grew up and now is a part of my generation, were to have a kid with someone of the opposite sex that's white, those black features are gone. That child looks nothing like his grandparents. And more importantly, they identify as white, which is how you get people like Andrew Tate saying the N-word with the hard E-R on Twitter. He went on Twitter, and again, we have to blur this out. Juneteenth isn't a real holiday. It's ratchet N-word BS. We have to blur the N-word and the other curse word out. The and you defend this pedo because he's a family friend. I haven't heard you speak out about Tate, but let's continue. You know, you said it looks like I'm in a teenage girl's bedroom. Yeah. To, to some people, that would be an insult. But to me, I find that quite flattering, to be honest. You know, like, that's exactly what you expect. Like. I'm fucking all these 15 year old. You know who one of the guys was? That was Candace Owens' husband. You know how Candace Owens always defended this guy? Yeah. It's because her husband's really good friends with this dude. Oh. So she's talking about he's such a good man. Yo, if they weren't buddy buddy or part of the same fucking scam. I haven't heard you speak out about Tate. But let's continue. You know, for me personally, I never thought of my husband as a race. It's, it's just very interesting to me that two people go, she's she's married to a white man. I look at my kids, I'm not like, oh, my kids are mixed. I married the person that it made the most sense for me to marry. You all see what I'm saying though, right? Look at that baby, beautiful family. But that baby will grow up one day and have a baby. And that baby will look nothing like Candace Owens. With my same interests, mm -hmm. it just was. Uh, what you will know, a lot of times people think that when people come together, it's because of how they look. Actually, I actually read this in a Thomas Sowell book, or maybe it was a Shelby Steele book. Uh, people tend to marry their IQ, which is interesting. Mm. You think like if you see two black people together, oh, it's because they are two black people, but actually they, they are probably better matched based on their IQ. Um, you know, I fell in love with my husband just because I think he is one of the most brilliant people ever. But here's the problem with that statement, because if he was a Latino, like you said, you don't like how Latinos look. I've never dated a Hispanic person. I've never been attracted to a Latino man. Which you would have never found out how brilliant he was. And I'm not going to put a cape on and panda, but I love black women. That's my number one pick. And that's okay if that's not your number one pick. It's kind of controversial to say that if you're black, black men aren't your number one pick. But listen, we can tell she don't like black men. So I'll move on to the moment we've all been waiting for. Dr. Capitalist Umar Johnson. Roll the clip. I'm coming. Let me get up. Wait a minute. <laughs> all right. Take your time. Let me turn this heat down. <sighs> My baby was sleeping in the bed. Got to go way off. Right now, we're looking at the checkmate, instant checkmate. Okay, this is his personal information right here. This is Umar Adula Johnson, 44. His birthday is August 21st, 1974. He's a Leo, Big Papa, as he calls himself. These are all his aliases, is Umar R. Abdullah Johnson. Now, the biggest one I see, this is pretty heavy right here. April 7th of 2018, possession of coke in DeKalb County, Georgia. Umar Abdullah Johnson, 44, got in trouble for having cocaine, a possession of cocaine, April 7th of 2018. Everybody's saying this is the psychologist that's supposed to be opening up this school in Delaware for boys. Then back in 2003, criminal attempt, criminal trespass and entering structure. Oh my goodness. In 09 of December 8th, in possession of controlled substance by per not regular. Well, controlled substance, that's drugs. And isn't this the time that he was talking about uh, getting money from people and opening up a school? Umar Abdullah Johnson, 44, did this back in 09. This is some exclusive information here. Back in 2000, fugitive from justice. 2003, criminal attempt of trespassing actual wow 2012 aggravated assault so that's why when he gets angry he goes off 2012 endangering welfare of children 2009 possession of controlled substance more drugs 
with a child offense in 2012. April 18th of 2013, retail theft. This video is five years old. We obviously can't see what she's looking at, but the website is still up and it's legit. So I was gonna go back and verify the information, but I'm too cheap and I didn't trust the website enough to put my credit card information in it. But if any other creators want the link, I'll send it to you. Then we have him gambling, which there's nothing wrong with you gambling, but if you're accepting donations from people and gambling money away, that's a problem. West Coast Ifatunde. West Coast Ifatunde. I'm feeling good today. I don't gamble, but we need about a million and a half for the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy renovation. We need about a mil and a half for the Garvey building. We need a mil and a half for the Garvey building. We need two million overall. So we gonna play and we gonna hit the day. We gonna play and we gonna hit the day, family. Let me show you what we about to do. Let me show you what we about to do, family. We about to get us some money for the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. We about to get it too right there. Y'all see that? That's what we need. That's what we need. That 1.2 mil. Y'all see that? That will get the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy, the whole campus. This will take care of the whole campus family. This will take care of the whole campus family. That 1.2? That will take care of the whole campus. So we're going to do Will of Fortune, Ifa Tunde style. We're going to do Will of Fortune, Ifa Tunde style. Now, y'all got to help me out because I don't know how to gamble. And I see all kind of shit. I see a wheel. I see the bar. How do I play this? We need this money for FDMG family. What do I do? Okay. Cash out, service. We got to play, family. Y'all think I'm playing. How do we play this? Credit, get the cash app. We got to get money by any means necessary. Frederick Douglass High School renovations coming right up. Let's see what we got. What we got, what we got, what we got. Am I going to win some money? When am I going to win some money? I need some money. Fun fact, he won no money. And I could make a whole video exposing him. It's unfortunate that we can agree on some of the things he says, but in my opinion, he will never be looked at as a leader because actions speak louder than words and his actions are not to be taken seriously. And more importantly, since this is an interracial dating video, I wanted to end it by reacting to some of the issues interracial couples have so you can make the educated decision not to do it. I'm kidding, kinda. Roll the clip. That's not interracial, people have their opinions. So definitely when it's interracial relationship, those opinions can be heightened. Um, even with you just posting things on social media, and you know, you never know people, you know, creeping into your DMs or whatever, and they're, they're you know, exposing, you know, their warped <laughs> mindsets, you know, on your page. So that's what I'm saying, just have a thick skin, you know. So I watched the full video, which was supposed to be about tips on having a successful interracial marriage. And I could summarize it up to have thick skin, make sure you're in a relationship because you like the person and not because you always wanted to be with a white, Latino, or Asian person. Stand up for your partner and ignore people that don't agree with you. Basically, don't care what other people think, which I gotta call cap on because I don't care who you are, people care what other people think and over time I can see something like that weighing on a relationship which is unfortunate because being married in itself isn't hard when you find the right person but every relationship is full of ups and downs but I think you add an extra level of difficulty when you date interracially trust me I've been on a few dates and I'm speaking from experience you have to deal with the stairs every time you go out and people will say stuff to you People have said stuff to me when I dated a snow bunny. And if you have kids, you'll have to deal with the fact that if your kid is acting up in public, people might call the cops thinking you kidnapped them. What I can see from the data is 80 plus percent of people are date inside their group. Mm. Me personally, I've dated everything. I say I make yourself the best version of yourself and pick from the best you have available. Mm. 
Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, we're all human, but most people want their group. Right. See, what I think the disconnect comes when you feel like you're having to pick from lesser options, but that's a function of you. Mm. Like you said, if you make yourself the top choice or become the best version of you, and you can say, and know not what you want, but know what you need, that's a difference. Mm. Know what you need and then pick for that and outcomes, not for short term. Amen. It doesn't have to be that complicated unless you're lost. And if you're lost, check this video out on why black men and women are lost.